Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Rohit Gosain, a community medical oncologist, alongside my brother Rahul Gosain, another community medical oncologist, and we are Oncology Brothers. Today, the topic at hand is metastatic breast cancer, focusing on hormone receptor positive space, where we will be diving into the world of CDK4-6 inhibitors. For that, we have Dr. Heather MacArthur from UT Southwestern, Dr. Laura Huppert from UCSF, Dr. Hope Rugo from City of Hope, and Dr. Komal Javeri from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, before we dive into the data, a little background. We've been using CDK4-6 inhibitors now almost for a decade, starting off with pobocyclib, though arguably now that has fallen out of favor because of the limited overall survival data in mature settings, unless we're using it in combinations with novelisib. Then came ribocyclib, and then shortly thereafter, we saw abemocyclib. With abema, we have overall survival data, but it was not statistically significant, but still clinically meaningful. With ribocyclib, we have statistically significant overall survival and clinically meaningful uh, data here. Hope, can you start us off here based off Mona Lisa data? What data do we have in hand today for ribocyclib in metastatic settings? I think we've had this data now for some time. Uh, ribocyclib, you know, improved survival both in the first and second line setting in combination with AIs, fulvestrin, uh, and you know, really, I think that data with the survival um, compared to the uh, data from the other two CDK4-6 inhibitors in the first line setting really led to ribocyclib becoming the preferred CDK4-6 inhibitor in combination with an AI primarily. The Monarch data showed a survival benefit in the second line setting. In the first line setting, it was the last trial to report, um, and it was a smaller study. So, you know, although there was a numeric difference, it wasn't statistically significant. And we don't really know what the differences are in patient populations. We do know that palbociclib plays the best in the sandbox with other agents, and it's less toxic for patients who have a lot of comorbidities. So we do have some real-world data also with palbociclib that helps us understand uh, uh, that it's not bad to use palbociclib in the right patient population who might not tolerate the other agents, or if you have toxicity from ribociclib, where you might not be able to continue treating with that drug. And of course, we've gotten a huge amount of experience to giving it now in the early stage setting as well. Well, thanks for that background, Hope. Um, Taylor, with regards to the dosing that we use in metastatic space for ribocyclib is 600 milligrams uh, for, for, uh, for three weeks followed by a week off. Though we have a hint that 400 milligrams works as well because it is being utilized in adjuvant space. Is there a patient population in metastatic space where you go with 400 milligrams as opposed to 600 milligrams? Well, the intention in the curative intent space with using the lower dose was to ideally mitigate the need for uh, QTC monitoring. That didn't work out, so we still have to do the QTC monitoring in the curative intent space. Um, I typically start at the full dose, 600, but would dose reduce um, if there were toxicity issues, whether they be neutropenia or what have you, um, to a lower dose. And I think we've seen a lot of data sets showing that dose reductions instead of discontinuations with CDKs is uh, critically important. And again, uh, the point to reiterate here is to keeping our patients exposed to these active medications for a longer period of time. Como, as we're trying to figure out that best frontline setting, we have enough data in that right patient for high tumor burden when we're comparing these CDK4-6 inhibitors to chemotherapy. Yes, there are some nuances keeping that bilirubin in mind, but today, what data in hand do we have to say, yes, CDK4-6 inhibitors with endocrine therapy should still be the preferred option over chemotherapy in these selected patients? Yeah, very good question. I think, you know, this stems out of the fact that we used to think that when you have just endocrine therapy, which is what we had before CDK4-6 inhibitors, and we thought about disease burden, we thought that single-agent endocrine therapy would not be enough, and we have to resort to chemotherapy. And, and sometimes we translate that into younger individuals as well. So our younger patients who are thought to have aggressive disease tumor biology, you know, we think that maybe they need chemotherapy and would benefit from chemotherapy. So it's the oncologist in us who wants to give chemotherapy thinking that this is aggressive disease. But with CDK4-6 inhibitors, we've now learned with multiple data sets across all three CDK4-6 inhibitors, if you will. Um, it started with Right Choice, which was a study that looked at ribociclib against chemotherapy. We then had Padma, which looked at palbociclib against chemotherapy, and also Amre, which looked at abemaciclib. And they all kind of have 
there's distinct definitions of how they define visceral crisis. But at the end of the day, what we learned was that CDK4-6 inhibitor with endocrine therapy is appropriate. And when, just because you have visceral disease does not mean that this patient needs chemotherapy, that the benefit that you see with respect, respect to overall response rates, with respect to PFS, will be maintained with the CDK4-6 inhibitor. The time to response was also very respectable and similar to what we see with chemotherapy. So I think it's very, very appropriate unless you have very high uh, liver function enzymes and you know very high bilirubin levels and the, you know the liver failure where you really need to do some kind of chemotherapy to kind of stabilize disease and then maybe consider a CDK. I would otherwise be very comfortable, you know, monitoring our patients, making sure that they are actually taking it compliant with it, making sure we're monitoring them very well and offer that uh, therapy to them.